Hi, I'm Reno Wells. I'm a medicine woman, intuitive healer, and coach. And I'm going to talk to you today about dark energies. Are you really scared opening up your energies, opening up to people that you may not even know, opening up to the unknown? It can be very terrifying. It can be really scary, especially if you're highly sensitive and you've already had experiences that tend to bring you down and you're, you get confused on the inside. And if that's you, then stay tuned because I'm going to talk to you about why that happens and what you can do so that when you do open up, that you're not going to be getting attacked. And it takes some deep inner work. So if that's interest of you, stay tuned. I'll be right back. What we're going to be talking about is you wanting to open up and expand your intuitive abilities and you could be either already working in this and you've hit a brick wall and you know there's more for you but you haven't been able to you know level up or you know you've been really suppressed by your inside world you're really sensitive and you just don't know how to come out and express yourself uh, however you found your way to this video I'm really glad that you did because I'm now going to be talking to you about things that highly sensitive people see and things that we feel, things that we experience. So this is going to go coincide with the channel teachings, the four pillars of the ethers, which you can find down below. If you want to know anything else about me, all that info is down below. So just take a look. So the four pillars of the ethers that I'm going to talk about is in regards to your psychic ability, just like how we have four elements to the earth. I am a healer and a medicine woman intuitive that talks about really what's happening in the energy fields because that's actually where I live. <laughs> I don't really live here. <laughs> it's kind of hard for me to live here, but uh, I kind of live out in the ethers and um, it's just my natural way in the stars. And so what I've been shown is like there's four elements in regards to the energies that are at play. So if you're scared of opening up and you're, or you have experienced darker things and whenever you do open up or when you start to dive into the sensitivity, you are bombarded. That's because number one, highly sensitive and people that are empaths or very uh, living from the inside world instead of from the in, inside of the outside in, we tend to feel things very deeply and when we have any loopholes or any holes in our etheric shield, then that energy can come in and kind of siphon and re-trigger, even if you feel things, can re-trigger things back into your energy field so that you remain at a certain consistent frequency. You may see a little bit of growth, but overall, you just keep doing this up and down thing. <laughs> uh, number two is that even though you're doing your inner work and your healing, negative things still continue to find you in your everyday experience. And the reason for this is because of the four pillars, which I'm going to get into. Number three is that you have a hard time saying no because you can feel everyone else's potential and you have a hard time seeing their darkness as much as their light. And I don't mean that you don't see their darkness, but what happens is that you always give them the benefit of the doubt, don't you? That's another reason that you need to watch this video. So let's talk about that. You guys are afraid of opening up or there's darker things. Now, the first element that I'm going to talk about is that it's basically a place that we all come into. Every ascended master had to walk through these four pillars, okay, or four gateways, four doorways, whichever you want to call it. But each master had to. Buddha did, Jesus did, everybody did. And so we are not exempt from the darkness, which I call the Wetiko, the first pillar, the first layer, which is the matrix. And I see it kind of like this dome that sits like this. And it's not easy to break through this. And especially for sensitive souls, we have to put ourselves in a very, what the world would call a selfish place. That's because we have to exercise the utmost of self-love. That means that we have to really learn to say no, and we have to really learn how to start giving to ourselves. This first pillar is sinister, psychic attacks, curses, really dark energy. And 
your blueprint that you've carried over in this life also includes past life lessons that you haven't been able to quite heal from in your etheric shield. And so those are reactive, reactivated into your etheric shield and they re then um, ignite the darkness and attract the darkness that still comes to you and seems to be following you wherever you go. But also when you're highly sensitive, you attract a moth like a flame. Everyone's attracted to you, dark, light, and it's learning how to discern those energies. So, so here's the thing. You've got to learn about your soul blueprint and how to work through those dark energies. Now, working through dark energies, there are different frequencies in that as well. So first of all, if you are channeling, if you are psychic, if you are uh, stuck in your path in regards to channeling and doing readings or whatever it is that you do or you're healing or excuse me, your hands on healer, but you're feeling just that you know, like there's this place that you're just stuck. It's with Tico. It's the darkness that's trying to hold you back. So the best way is to go within that. I know it's hard. It is to go within that darkness. It is to allow it to come up and to allow the visions that come up. It doesn't matter how dark, perverted, sinister, disgusting, however those feel. Because even if you haven't had trauma in this life that reactivated your darkness, what's happened is that it's coming through your blueprint in another way. And it doesn't really matter about just this lifetime. We like to segregate things as humans, right? It's actually continuous. There's no real death. We are consistently dying. And if you're truly on the spiritual path, you'll recognize you are dying every single day. So the first thing to beat the Watiko and before and the sinister attacks is to get very real with yourself that's the first thing get very honest with your sensitivity pull your energy back and rest into the darkness and go into it of what it's trying to show you speak to spirit speak to your guides speak to yourself through it i talk to myself all the time <laughs> um you know journal about it do something different though and ground to the earth. It's very important to use Mother Earth, very grounding energy to the earth. This darkness can be very scary and especially if you're dealing with sinister things like demons and things that are unethically down in the underworld. Uh, you've got to learn how to have a very strong, powerful force against that dark and that comes from the utmost of self-love and that comes from a warrior spirit and that comes from standing your ground to these dark things. You cannot necessarily be friends with them. You have to continuously hold a very strong stance. And so when something approaches you, you acknowledge their power, but then they are to also acknowledge your power. Now, I don't want you to do any of these exercises unless you are actually working one-on-one -on -one with me. But however you can figure out for yourself, it is to shine that light really bright and to have the darkness right in your face, no matter what that looks like, no matter how it's presented to you, no matter if it's the scariest thing coming at you, you know, uh, trust me, I've had pretty scary things coming at me. And it's how do you stand very strong in that light and okay in yourself so that it comes. If you feel any doubt of fear, the Watiko will get you. And I'm not saying that in a negative way. It's also a good thing because if you're that sensitive and you're getting some really sinister things coming at you, then it's a gift showing you that you are the complete opposite of that. You have the ability to transmute from that depth into something much higher. And if you're able to do that, you're going to be able to break out of the, out of the Watiko, out of the matrix control system. But the first thing is to learn how to stand very bright in it, to face it without anger, to have the intention of power and peace that's pushing you up that's holding you up and that you're completely sealed. Meditation, self-love, and I use plant medicines and, and things like that. But however it is, that is the first step in breaking out of the Wetiko. Second is learning the balance of the other two pillars, which is the masculine is one and the feminine is the third or third or second, whichever one you want to put. But they kind of go together, but they're two separate pillars. Learning about your masculine energy on the inside and your feminine energy on the on the inside as well. And how that is coming into union in your energy field, in your energy body. Masculine energy for me is very much about building something solid on this earth, on this earth plane, being an entrepreneur, uh, working for myself, being able to have freedom and every advocate, every avenue, sorry, I should say, in my life. Every little piece, I love freedom in every possible way. 
it's just what I want. I want that physically manifested that my spirit on the inside has freedom on the outside. Now yours may be completely different. So whatever that is for you, imbalancing your masculine, what is it that you want to manifest in the physical world? And I'm not talking about just the house or the car. This is like the secret that law of manifestation and law of attraction people don't like to say like, oh, you can get that house, you can do this. But highly sensitive souls and people that are really on the spiritual path and doing very deep healing, they're really here to be of service to the universe. So that's who I'm talking to. And if you're here to bring peace on earth and to be that bridge, then this is about discovering more of how you can serve because you know that law of attraction, those things are naturally going to come to you. And so balancing your masculine energy, figuring out in the physical plane, the desires that you want to feel, the energy vibration that you want to live in, that's very important in how to balance the masculine. The feminine aspect is following the unknown, following that deep, deep, deep visceral feeling deep inside of you that you know that you have to do something even though you know it's going to cause problems in your life even though you know you may have to end a relationship a marriage leave a job travel halfway across the world whatever it is that spirit is trying to bring into you it is to honor that and then to balance out the masculine with your plans you know you can't go on one on the without the other and then trying to merge that into the physical so those are two very important things for highly sensitive people to do as well. And then this is, again, if you're experiencing blocks and you, and you want to open, but you're afraid, these are the things to start practicing bit by bit. It's not going to happen overnight, you guys, but bit by bit so that eventually you can start standing strong in the dark and balance the, and then balance your masculine and feminine energies. The last one is one consciousness, unity, Holy Spirit consciousness, however you want to call that. That's. I guess the state of enlightenment that we say, but enlightenment is not really a place or a destiny. Things are always ebbing and flowing, right? There's, we're not really going anywhere. We're just continuously unfolding and revealing ourselves. So basically what the unity is, is that you've merged this, that you can stand strongly in all three other pillars as one wholeness. And once you can do that, you've mastered the third pillar. Now, this is again, like I said, going to take little steps. It's not going to happen overnight. You're going to have to keep going through the up and down, the back and forth. That's just part of the spiritual path, you know. And um, once you can really, the dark energies, that stuff that tries to really hold you down, that's the stuff, you guys, that is going to just alleviate all the other three pillars and come fully into alignment. So if you'd like more information on that, again, look at the blog down below. But this is the teaching that uh, I wanted to put out there and to share with you guys, especially for highly sensitive souls. Start honoring you those emotions. Start honoring what you're feeling on the inside. Do not compare yourself to the outside world. Anything that the society has told you is false. I'm telling you that now. It's made from a mind place. It's not made from a healing energy place. It's not made from the soul. We don't sing and dance in our community, in our society. We don't act weird and be all fun and loving to each other. That's how we're supposed to be. And so anything out of your outside world and you're recognizing that it does not match and what you truly know to be on the inside, do not believe it. Believe yourself. Believe in your power. That's the way that you're going to break out of these things. Face the darkness with your bright light. Tell them and show them, I'm bright. You are trying to scare me right now, but I'm going to stand so strong. And I see your power of darkness. Darkness, yes, you are getting into my wounds. You are triggering me. I am not welcoming it. I am recognizing it. And I'm standing strong in my light now so that we can stand side by side without completely overtaking one another. And that's balance. Okay, you guys, thanks so much. Again, don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, take a look at my all my services down below. And um, if you want more information about me, you can, in, you can email me at info at renawells.com. I have a monthly membership. All that stuff is down below. Take a look. Discover me as I discover you <laughs> and this new path that I'm on. And so much love. If you're interested in women's ayahuasca retreats, I am running uh a retreat this may 14th to the 21st it's already filling up we haven't even advertised it yet but we have lots of friends and family so if you would like to get on that list then send me an email as well at info at readawells.com aho namaste bye guys i can't wait to hear what you have said down below just comment and we'll chat about what about what i've just talked about bye